as we read through Sefer Bereshis, there will be many different tragedies going on with the Mabel, the Flood, we have the Dor HaFloga, the Tower of Babel, we have Anshe Stom and Amora, etc. You go through, there will be many ups and downs, many positive and many terrible events that happen. And it will be interesting to note that certain type of events, certain, certain type of events that happen, God has very little tolerance. He comes down and he comes down hard and destroys a city, a country, etc. And other times we're going to see, not just limited to save a Bereshit, but the whole Torah, there are other times in Jewish history where we see God seems to have more tolerance and more patience. So what, is that, what exactly is the rule of thumb? What is this principle that um, we have to work with? So there's a Mesha Chachma in Parshas B'Shalach who teaches us this Yisod. And in fact, we'll just go, we'll use the Mesha Chachma to explain another question. There's a famous Rashi we read in Parshas Noach. Well, Nechtam Gzardinam El El that even though even though they were involved in terrible actions, gila arayis, illicit relations, avodazara, part of two of the big three, we know there are three things a Jew has to give up their life for, his or her life for. Usually we have a principle, human life has, a, has infinite value. And we do everything we can to keep a person alive, whether a person's stuck on a desert island, he's obligated to eat non-kosher to stay alive. Someone's sick or life-threatening to have an obligation to go to the hospital, drive in the car. But we know human life takes precedence over everything, save the big three. If someone puts a gun to it and says, worship idols, commit illicit relations, or worship um, or murder someone, we say better to go out Kiddush Hashem than to have the stain of that sin on your soul. So we can see usually human life, so we know, there. so obviously if it's, if it's part of the cardinal sins, you even have to give up your life for. So therefore, we, uh, we know the Dor HaMabu was involved in illicit relations and idol worship, that I would think the flood would come over those two terrible Averas. As we see, because even though it's true, as the Mishnah says in Perki Avos, we don't know Schar Mitzvah, or the, uh, we don't know reward for mitzvahs, because God doesn't want everyone just to do the things that have the good reward, and therefore those that don't will get left out, so God doesn't tell us to reward. However, regarding negative commandments, we can figure out, because they give us onshin, they give us punishments. And therefore, we, the more severe the punish, if something's liable to capital punishment, you can assume it's a pretty serious offense. Someone, someone which is liable for makis, a good old-fashioned weapon, is also a good offense, not as severe, and then you have monetary matters, civil matters, civil matters as well. So gazela is something that doesn't even have a, doesn't even get makis. If you steal, you don't get makis, not because it's not a serious thing, it's because we have a principle, it's alav haditakliyase, that a negative commandment that could be rectified with the positive commandment so we don't get makas on the since there's a mitzvah heshev as agzela to return the stone object. So the technical reasons why there's no makas, there's no punishment. However, it's still a serious offense, but not in the league of the big three of Gila Arayas and Avodah Zara. So that's the question: is why is it? I would have thought the final decree would have been on illicit relations, idol worship. Why does Rashi say go nechtam zardinam el gezo? It seems to be minor leagues here. When you have major league infractions, 
why is the marble coming on minor league stuff, relatively speaking? So that's what the Mesha Chochma, it gives us the Yisrael among others, as a tremendous difference the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the way God treats the Tzibor and treats the Yachid, how he treats the community and how he treats the individual. Then when it comes to the individual, then there is a severity, there is a levels of onshin, as we know, that different Aveyors carry more serious penalties and it applies. But when you're dealing with the Tzibor, when you're dealing with communal penalty, it's a whole different ballgame. As the Meshachachim explains, the door of Achav, the wicked generation of Achav, which worshipped idols, yet nevertheless, they were victorious in battle because it was Achdus. They didn't have tail bearers among them. And in contrast, the door of David, the generation of David, that was Sadiqim, but they lost in battle because they didn't treat each other properly. And we see many examples of this that what we know we have the phrase zero tolerance today. So when it comes to mitzvahs, but other more makom, commandments between man and God, so God has a lot of tolerance, patience. He can wait to try to rectify. But when you're dealing with commandments, but other machaver in a communal sense, then watch out. God gets very angry. And and therefore, when it comes to gila, even gila rise in Avodah Zara, which are terrible cardinal sins, yet God could wait. It's bad, okay, maybe they'll do tshuva. But we'll neck them gardinam ala gezo. But the final thing we came on gezo, avera ben adam achavero, basic, basic need of society is people to be honest and not to be stealing. And as the Medrash tells us, they stole pachas mishava pruta. And that's how um, one chasidish, uh, when the chasidish is from, they write, what's the connection between the marble and the flood? No, not the marble and the flood. Why did Gezel, why was, what was the connection between stealing and the flood? So he explains the long design that they only stole pachas mishava pruta. They couldn't take anyone to court. They just stole a little bit at a time. But a little bit at a time adds up. So too, where does the flood begin? Drop by drop, it rains a little bit, a little bit more, and then eventually it floods you out. So that was the Midah Kineged Midah. But either way, that's why, so when it came to Gezel, that's why Kaddish Baruch closed up shop on Gezel, because that he can't tolerate. And that's why as well, we pointed out that That's the difference between the reaction we see of God for the door Hamabo, which he destroyed the world, versus his reaction for the door Haflaga. Dor Haflaga, building the tower, that was a war against God. They wanted to go up and shoot arrows at God. And so that was a bit other Makom attack. It was against God. But here it was a bit other Machavero when it came to the Mabo. So when it comes to a mob, what was God's reaction when you dealing with the tzibor, ben amachaver, you destroy the world. When it comes to Dorafoga, you laugh at a big deal, you're shooting arrows, he doesn't take it seriously, they go away, you will try to get them to do tshuva. And that's how the commentators explain as well, there were two major sins when the, in, the, in the time period when the Jews left Mitzrayim until they went into Eretz Israel, the sin of the Cheda Egel, the golden calf, and the sin of the Maraglam, the sin of the spies. And we know by one of them, the sin of the Cheda Egel, God was willing to forgive them on, but the sin of the spies didn't seem there was any forgiveness. The 40 years that the Jews were dying year, year, annually because of the sin of the Maraglam. Why such a severe why was the why Chede Egel the willing to forgive and not by the Maraglim? Because the Chede Egel is the ultimate mitzvah by Adam Lamakom in the reverse. It was idol worship. So therefore, when it comes to violating by Adam Lamakom, then God has a lot of patience. So we'll accept Shuvah. When it comes to the Maraglim, and they spoke Lashon about Moshe, they were Kaflai Tova. 
they were a bunch of ingrates that God doesn't have any tolerance for, and therefore he cannot forgive them for the sin of the Muraga. As we see as well, we all know there are uh, the Ten Commandments, or the Aseris Hadibros. It was given on two tablets. The question is, why two tablets? Why not ten tablets? Why not five tablets? Why two? So the Gemara in Kedushin tells us that it's split up into two categories. The first five are commandments between man and God. The second one are mitzvah between man and man. And therefore, they point out that the first five are commandments between man and God and the last five are benam kaveiro. But which one seems to be out of place? The mitzvah of kibbutz of aim, the mitzvah of honoring one's parents, that seems to be out of place. So how come it's not? How come it's on the wrong side of the tablet? So that's what the Gemara explains to us. We only have three creators: mommy, daddy, and God. And therefore, really, kibbutz of aim is unique, as the Minchas Kinnak explains. It's a it's a combination of a mitzvah on a and a mitzvah on lamakom because. The first are our commandments to our Creator. Keep it up the aim. Parents are our Creator. At the same time, it's also it's a perfect transition to the second tablet, but I'm a chavero. And therefore, those therefore those are the two sides of the tablets. We have mitzvahs but I'm a makom, and mitzvahs but I'm a chavero. So they point out. Chazal tell us what brought about Chorban Bayis Rishon. Why was the first temple destroyed? So the Gemara tells us because of the big three. They violated Gila Rayas, illicit relations, Shvichas Dom, and murder. And Avodah Zarah, an idol worship. And why was the Chorban by Yusheni seemingly, seemingly for a little less important and little trivial thing called Sinas Chinam, unwarranted hatred. People didn't get along with one another. So at first glance, what's more severe? Clearly the big three. Yet, if you look at the results, you seem to come to a different conclusion. How long after the Chorban by Yisrishon did it take for them to start rebuilding? Seventy years. Seventy years they started rebuilding for the Bay Yisheni. How long did it take to start rebuilding for the Bay Yisrishi? We're still waiting. So why is it that for the Chorban by Yisrishon it was seventy years, but for the Chorban by Yisheni we're still waiting? To the same result, but the Chorban by Yisheni, when it comes to the Tzibor, Although it was terrible, the big three, but you know God was willing to look. But on Makkah, God's looking to overlook that and give you, and and forgive us and to move on. When it comes to sin as chinam, Jews not living in harmony and unity, that's something God can't tolerate, and therefore, here they point out that when it comes to but on Makkah. So in the Tzibor, God has tolerance. So therefore, the big three can forgive. But when it comes to a sin of sin and unwarranted hatred, that we're still waiting for. And as um, as Rav Cook points out, that if sin of sin was the cause, if it, in order to get the third temple to be rebuilt, we have to rectify the problem to begin with. That if the problem was sin of sin, we have to go to the opposite problem and ava sin and sin is kind of doesn't mean you hate someone for no reason. Then you should just have to see that you need therapy for. What the Chazal are telling us, you you have a good reason, and that Chazal are telling us that reason is fina. But either way, we see this tremendous episode of the Mesha Chachma and many other Achronim in terms of the distinction regarding the community, how God views the community when it when it, even though, on, and from an individual basis, Gila, Rayas, Shvichas, Dhamim, was are all much more severe and they come with more punishments. And Gezo doesn't even have an Onish, it's a Lava Nita 
Yet, nevertheless, lo neptam zardinam el agezo, what caused the destruction, what caused the mabul was gezo. And that's the distinction between the dor ha-mabul and the dor ha-flaga. Ha-flaga, not really a severe punishment because that was benam lamakom. That's the difference between the dor shel dov and the dor shel achav. There was achtas during the time of achav and not during david. That's the difference between Chorban by Yisrisha and Chorban by Yisheni. And that's the difference between the sin of the Cheda Ego and the sin of the Maraglim, that when it comes to individuals and Atom, so then we have that traditional standard. When it comes to communal sins and communal punishments, a whole different standard, the zero tolerance for violating Adam Chavero. And that's the, you know, and, um, and therefore that's why we find when it comes to Ben Machavero in the community, it's a much more strict approach, zero tolerance, or God is much more tolerant for Ben Adam or Makom. And therefore, when, I, you know, when we learn through the parshas, we have to learn the lessons to be a complete Jew. We have to keep Mrs. Ben Adam or Makom and Machavero, but we have to realize as well, when it comes to communal things, you have to make an extra effort in the Be'ala Machavero, because that God gets very angry when there's communal fighting among the Jewish people, and there isn't any actors and there isn't any unity.